If you could only have one car for the rest of your life, then surely, surely this would be on the shopper list. Meet the fourth generation Audi RS4 Avant, one of the most celebrated performance all-rounders on sale. For 61,625 of your pounds, you get five seats, permanent four-wheel drive, a 505 litre boot and precisely the same amount of power as its predecessor, albeit with two fewer cylinders. That's because in the name of improved efficiencies, Audi has swapped out the naturally aspirated 4.2 litre V8 used in the previous model, the B8 RS4, for an all new twin turbocharged 2.9 litre V6. That is a huge drop in displacement compared to the old model, but you need to remember two things. This unit is 31 kilograms lighter, so there's a lot of less weight going on over this front end. And the original RS4, the iconic B5, also used a 2.7 litre V6 by turbo tuned by Cosworth. And that wasn't exactly a stranger to going absolutely mental fast. Beneath this plastic cover, twin turbos have been positioned inside the V of the engine for the shortest possible run from exhaust valves to turbo, minimizing lag. The V itself is set at 90 degrees, allowing the engine to be positioned as low into the chassis as possible. While every manufacturer is desperately trying to limbo under the latest CO2 regulations, while not blunting performance or tainting what made its car special in the first place, you do immediately get in this car and lament the passing of an amazing soundtrack. Sonically speaking, this turbocharged V6 isn't a patch on the naturally aspirated V8 that came before it, and how could it be? You can engage dynamic mode and inject a bit more noise into this cabin, but it just isn't as guttural as the Mercedes AMG C63 Estate. What is like the Mercedes AMG though, is the low end response. There is a bucket load of torque on this thing, available across quite a wide rev range. And it means that whereas previously you had to really wring the neck out of the old V8 here, you can just punch in between the corners, go up and down the gearbox, and it makes it more usable on a day-to-day -day basis, but also noticeably faster, noticeably. Of course, what was never in doubt is the way the RS4 looks. I know it's subjective, and do tell me if you think I'm wrong, but I reckon that this is the best-looking RS4 yet. The twin oval exhausts, the arches that have been blistered and stretched out over the wider tracks, all the aggressive design cues are there, but they are so subtle. You could spec this car in a really stealthy colour, and only those in the know would give you approving nods, which is exactly what you want from a genuine cue car. Quattro enhanced traction means a 0-62 miles an hour sprint can be realised in 4.1 seconds, while top speed when uncapped is 174 miles an hour. Yet while RS models always seem to deliver on raw performance, the driving experiences can often be a bit hit and miss. The speed is unquestionable. This thing is rapid, as any good RS should be. The handling balance, too, is quite neutral. In normal driving, the split is 40-60 front to rear, so oversteering might be off the menu, but you do get an unfeasible amount of grip and superb traction and turning. And then, of course, when the weather turns and it starts to chuck it down, you can still drive almost as hard as this, while all those Mercedes AMGs are spinning off backwards into hedges. There are a few areas that we do need to talk about, Martin. First one being the gearbox. Gone is the traditional dual clutch transmission in favor of a more traditional torque converter auto to handle all that abundance of pull that you get and feel in your chest. There's 40% more torque in this car than the previous naturally aspirated V8. Does it make that much of a difference? Well, if you're not spending every day on a racetrack, no. The shifts are really quick and crisp. There's also an eighth cog now, which helps improve your fuel consumption when you're just tootling around on the motorway. The ride comfort too feels so well set up for daily driving. We've been testing this car 
on the adaptive dampers and there are three settings. There's comfort, there's one called individual which is basically a normal mode and then there's dynamic and each of the three settings are slightly softer than the equivalent setup would be in a Mercedes AMG C63. The steering, it's less resolved certainly. Again, there are two versions. There's a standard steering rack and dynamic steering, and that features a variable ratio steering rack. And it basically means that the more you turn, the less input the steering requires for the wheels to articulate. And that's designed for a couple of reasons. It's supposed to smooth out and create a calmer drive when you're doing high-speed motorway runs, but it's also designed to give you a bit more maneuverability in town without loads of arm twirling. In reality, what it does is it makes your inputs feel a little bit unpredictable because you don't actually know what you're going to get. When you select a dynamic mode, you get that linear feedback again, which is great. The problem then in the dynamic mode is that you have quite a lot of artificial weight and inertia in the wheel and it doesn't build up progressively as you'd want. It just feels like a steady state of weight, almost like you're driving a computer game. I'm sure with a little bit of fiddling about, you'd get used to it over time, but I just kind of feel that you wish it was set up in such a way that you could bond with it immediately. If you're a fan of fast Audis, you are going to really like the RS4 Avant. It is suitably rapid, sharp to drive, and it looks sensational. It might not be the most engaging or rewarding car to drive at this level, in fact, in many ways, it feels like a swifter state car than a sports car with a boot strap to the back. But as a daily, as something to live with, the practicality, the comfort, the refinement, it is a truly desirable thing.